Hello guys and welcome back to Cool Quotes Dark Souls Let's Play. You're probably wondering why I'm not at Firelink Shrine where I left off last time. But don't worry, I didn't do anything crazy. Uh, all I did was I came over here to where Andre of Astoria is because I needed to upgrade my Zwihander. Which you'll see that I did. I upgraded it all the way to plus 5. Which is why you'll probably notice that all those souls I got from the Gaping Dragon are now gone. But the next thing I'm going to do before I hit Blight Town is I'm going to get a couple of things settled here uh, and head into Darkroot Garden. This is an optional area, at least the first part of it is, the part I'm going to do right now. But it has some pretty cool items and a fairly good, a fairly good ember that I want to get a hold of. Uh, but guarding the door is this guy. Uh, he is. I believe that he's called a Titanite Demon, or something like that, or a Faceless Demon. Uh, he hits pretty hard, but uh, it's very easy to avoid him. Basically what I would do if I were you is try to get him away from the rubble, heal when you get a chance, and just keep your shield up and get in close and circle around him to, his, to your right. As you can see, a lot of his attacks will actually go right over you. Uh, he will jump away at the last possible second, which makes a character like me with the heavy weapons a little, you know, a little frustrated sometimes. But the biggest thing you got to worry about is not these normal attacks. It's what he's going to do right here. He jumps up and just slams you down. And the best way to do it, uh, to avoid it, is you notice the first time I did it, I actually rolled out of the way. That's the best way to avoid that. Uh, standing there and just taking the hit, uh, you're probably going to take a lot of damage. Even if you have your shield up, it tends to break it. So that's the one attack I would definitely be wary of. If he uses the, if you get far away, he uses this little electric attack. Super easy to dodge. Uh, and if you're close, as as I said, he just kind of swings at you. Um, but I'm doing pretty good damage to him because I got the upgraded Zwihander. And I think I'm pretty much going to use that for the entirety of the Dark Root Garden that I'm going to do today. Come on. I'm looking at myself like... It's funny watching yourself in hindsight because... You know, you're just thinking to yourself, like, why didn't I swing there? Why didn't I attack? And it's because I'm... You know, I was playing it safe when I was doing it. But it, lo it looks pretty pretty bad sometimes. Like there I'm just thinking, why would I ever walk into where the rubble is? I should have known I couldn't strafe around him. And I don't I don't know. Oh, this fight's pretty much over. Come on, go in for the kill, man. Go in for the kill. I, I think that's no, it's not gonna do it yet. And I missed him! I can't believe I just did that. Okay. Wow, I must have been super frustrated when I did this. I don't even remember it. Alright, so he's dead. He gives you like a hefty 2,000 2, souls. And he drops a Demon Titanite. Uh, which is pretty pretty legit. Uh, you can upgrade, I believe, uh, boss weapons with that. Like Kalog's Fury Sword. Which I probably won't be getting in this playthrough. I'm not 100% sure. But I have a strength character. That's a dexterity weapon. But it is badass. So you guys should check it out if you get a chance. Uh, but anyway... There's some guys in this forest here. Look at these guys. Uh, and basically, you know, they go down pretty damn easy with the upgraded weapon, but they also have a very high drop rate for these things called mosses. And, actually, I'm kind of surprised. I, so far in my playthrough, I've seen a lot of summon signs, and the first couple times I played through this game, I felt like some of these areas, like, you just barely saw them at all. But lately, like, I don't think I've ever seen one dark regard. So I guess, I don't know, people are trying new places, which is, which is cool. And that'll definitely help new people out. Maybe there's some more, maybe more people playing it now than when I first got the game, which is definitely encouraging. I think it's a great game. Everyone should give it a try. Uh, whether you, you know, it's got a little something for every, everyone. Uh, you know, if you, if you dig real deep, it's got a pretty good lore uh, for people who are into that. Uh, it's you know it's a challenging game for people who are into challenge that a lot of new games don't have. 
And for people who just like to go around and cut stuff up, you know, that's pretty much what you do. And some pretty cool weapons, you know. You can, you can pimp yourself out in some pretty cool gear. So I, I definitely recommend it to anybody who tries. Now, if you attack this wall here, and I'm actually going to put down a message and try to, because attacking is not really the best message, I'm going to put illusory wall ahead, and hopefully I'll get some humanity uh, from that. But there's actually an illusory wall, and there's a bonfire behind it. A fairly, fairly essential one if you want to farm in the darker garden, which is, isn't that hard to do. You just need 20,000 souls to open the path of Artorius. And you won't see me uh, farm there. Uh, but it's good if you like, you know, you need to get, you know, an item or an upgrade and you just want to grind some souls real quick. Because uh, it's, it's fast, fast grinding. And that's where that's where the crest goes but we're not gonna head down there right now we're gonna head down this other path and basically the reason I'm here is twofold as I said there's that ember that I want to get and there is also um, <coughs> excuse me there is also this set of armor that I'd like and going through here is not a hard area so I figured I'd pick it up now and um, these guys, as I was saying before, also drop these mosses that heal poison, uh, which is fairly important. Uh, I probably won't get enough just running through here to take on Blight Town, so I'll probably end up buying some from the Undead Merchant. <laughs> and I didn't really tell you guys about this when I first walked in this little area, but those three guys I just killed, they don't pop up like normal ones until you pick up that item and then they all ambush you at once and will probably I mean I got killed the first time so but you can take them out one by one and they won't even attack you if you know they're there so just keep it in mind uh, there's gonna be a couple of these in the area they look like trees but you can notice they're actually the, the roots are actually moving a little bit they have health and you can kill them they're like living trees and this one is blocking a little path uh, heads right in here and there's some items in here we can snag along with some strange frog tadpole looking motherfuckers I think there's one up here you hey, look at this thing I don't know what this is supposed to be it's a little sperm cell of a monster but there they don't do anything I mean they jump at you but they take like one hit to knock down even you know I didn't even do that much damage to the guy 171 HP total it's nothing there's another tree Okay, I don't even I don't know if these guys actually do a damage shoot. I don't think I've ever been damaged by one. I know some of them sometimes have these like little snake things in them. And I guess those guys would do some damage to you if you got hit, but that guy doesn't do much of anything. So if I can find the path that leads up off to the right, we can head up there and snag a really handy ring. I'm not 100% sure if this is, I think this is it. Hopefully I'm not backtracking. I th yeah, I think this is it. Uh, we'll know for sure in a second. There should be like this giant stone knight up here. Yeah, here he is. Alright, so we're going the right way. Uh, these guys are pretty slow and pretty easy. Uh, they cast a spell that he's doing right now, you're seeing, that actually slows you to a really really slow speed so your best method is to take them out uh, if, if when they do that spell it takes them like 10 seconds to cast that gives you enough time to get a couple swings in yeah, like I just did there and you can kill him usually before he can even attack you but if you can't uh, you just hold up your shield circle around him and be really really good with stamina management because it's the only way you're gonna beat him because he hits pretty hard and you have to make sure that you don't actually get hit uh, because you'll run out of stamina real quick uh, so anyway, the ring I just got is the wolf ring, and basically it gives you more poise, which will be pretty useful in some fights. I think I'll probably use it against Quilag when I fight her, because sometimes she jumps on you when you're trying to attack her, and makes it a lot easier to get your get your attacks off. Uh, basically, poise is usually on your shields and and armor, and it allows you to basically if you're if you have heavy armor on, you'll have high poise. 
and if that's the case, when someone attacks you, you're more likely to be able to still attack, you know, instead of getting staggered. And that's basically can save you, you know, in many occasions. So, uh, it's a good ring to have. It's definitely situational. Like, it's not something I'm going to keep equipped forever, but right now it's definitely better for this area than the rusted iron ring, so... Alright, there's a lot of these guys, but I'm not sure if there's anything else in this area that I need to actually collect. I think there's one more, isn't there? Maybe not. Oh, there's an item over here. Okay, good thing I checked. Soul of a Proud Knight. Now these soul items, you'll probably never see me uh, crunch anymore again on camera. But just know that I do use them fairly frequently. If you're like wondering where the best time to use them is, it just depends. But don't hold on, on them for too long. I usually like to keep a couple of them on hand. You know, here and there, just in case like stuff happens and I die and I need to buy something quick. Um, but basically, as I said early in an earlier let's play, they get they definitely depreciate in value as you get further into the game. Like you know, some of these ones that you're getting now are gonna give you, you know, maybe a fifth of a level, and by the end of the game, it's not even gonna be like a hundredth of a level. So it's you know, not gonna help that much. Alright, so anyway, there's a bunch of these guys in the forest. Make sure you take them on one on one. -on -1. I'm not even sure what it would be like to not take them on one on one. I've never tried, but if one of them got off a slow and you had to try to dodge two of these guys, I think you would probably lose. Alright, so here's a snake, and I kick him by accident, and then this. So these snakes, they just kind of hang out. They're like double headed snakes. They hang out in the tree. I guess they're more like geckos. Uh, but anyway, they're they're easy to kill. Sometimes they drop these things called egg vermifuge, and there's this covenant, the Chaos Covenant, that you can later join, and you can get infected uh, with these eggs. That so you'll have an egg sack on your head, <laughs> which sounds kind of random now that I'm saying it. If you if you don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, that's one of the only ways to cure it is an egg vermifuge. And this, these these guys, there's like two of them that respawn in this area are pretty much the only one places to get the egg vermifuge. I believe that there is one in the painted world of Ariamis as just a as just a drop, not a snake, like one of the egg vermifuges, but they're rare. I mean they're very situational. It's not like you can get infected easily. It's only like if you let yourself get attacked enough times by a specific enemy that it'll happen. So you basically have to plan it out. But if you decide you don't want it anymore, these are the, like these guys are how you fix that situation. Alright, so there's basically... There's one, there's a couple more knights, and there's one armor set that I want to get in this area, and it's like super booby-trapped. Uh, there's like a ton of enemies around it that are all just like waiting to kill you. So I'm going to try to take that guy that on now, but I'm going to show you how to basically disable it and take him out one by one, which is completely doable. But first, I'm going to take out this uh, this last knight. I believe there's one more knight. Maybe not. Yeah, I think there isn't anything left. I think we're just going to have to head to the... I think we're just going to have to head to the set, the armor set. So I'll take out the bow, because you do need the bow to pull here. If you don't have a bow, you are out of luck. It's a lot more difficult without a bow. Uh... But anyway, if you're wondering um, why I generally know things before they happen, I am choosing to do post-commentary on most of these videos. And the reason for that is that it's very difficult to do stream of consciousness in Dark Souls, in my opinion, because I have trouble concentrating you know, enough to focus on this game as it is. Never mind if I was to try to concentrate and commentate at the same time. I, I don't think I'd be able to do it. Uh, if you want to see a really good series uh, that does use live commentary for Dark Souls, I'd check out the one by Northern Lion. He's a pretty funny guy, and he does excellent live commentary. But I'm probably going to do mostly post. I'm thinking about doing a game maybe a little less concentration intensive for my next Let's Play, and I'll, I, mean, I think I might try a live commentary of that. 
I don't know how I'll do. Uh, it, you know, it might be kind of tough to think of stuff on the run, but maybe it'll be more funny that way. At least that's what I'm kind of hoping. I mean, it's not like I script these things out anyway, but... Alright, so as you're noticing, th I just killed two of those little, uh, little bush guys. But there's still two knights on the ground right there. We're gonna get those guys last. Basically, you just, you circle around this item. And... Kill the bush guys one-on-one -on -one by pulling them with a bow. Purple moss clump is what heals poison, so that's a good pickup. Basically, these these bush guys aren't hard. Um, I didn't really explain how to beat them because it seems so obvious. But there's only one thing you have to watch out for, and that is this little grab attack they do, which does a lot of damage, and it's unblockable. But uh, other than that, these guys are fairly 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 easy. These guys, on the other hand, would suck big time to have to fight while you're fighting something else. So right, you're gonna see a good example of me f be trying to fight this guy with the slow effect, and you just circle. All you do is circle and stamina management. Take one attack and then keep circling. And he d these guys don't take that much damage. I mean, if you had like a, a quicker weapon, if they, they I mean these guys might take longer to. To, to, to kill because of how long like because you know Zui Hander is level 5 and it's doing like 300 damage to some some of these guys and you know to this guy it's only doing like 40 damage but so I don't know it might be, you might do like 10 damage with like you know a regular sword but you just take your time these guys aren't hard they just patience is required so anyway here's the set the Elite Knight armor, and it's actually pretty legit, so I'm going to put it on. Makes you look kind of like a badass. I'm pretty sure it's the same set that the guy who gives you the Estus at the beginning of the game wears. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to also put on Havels, because I'm pretty sure I need it to roll with this set. Uh, I'm not going to you know, test it out, but I'm pretty sure that Havels is required. And then I'm going to head into these ruins, and... The only thing left of the Darker Garden, or at least this part of it, is the Moonlight Butterfly, which is the boss. And that's what you're going to see me do next time. So, that's it for today. And I'll see you around. Later, guys.